Hey everybody and welcome back to Freedom to Paint with me, Ronnie Falco. Today's episode is going to focus on folk art clothespin dolls with the theme of supermodels. So you want to have some subject matter um, posted behind you or on the walls so you can uh, reference the materials to make your clothespin dolls a little more realistic. So in Kentucky we <clears throat> frequently make clothespin dolls and we call them clothespins, like kinfolk. Um, so that's a little name that we used. Also you want to have reference books around you, Dollhouse and Dolls, Making American Folk Dolls, and American Folk Art. Um, all these things will help make you a more successful folk painter artist. I also have a little exercise equipment to keep my hands strong for holding brushes. I have little toys and models out. I have a little frog here to remind me that life is a party. So you see this guy like, yeah man, come on in and grab a, grab a drink, grab a beverage. I have a little clothes pin, clothes can death doll to basically remind me that when you're dealing with supermodels, sometimes they starve to death and die. So, so being glamorous is not all fun and games. Okay, We're, we can't live forever. Got a little sea captain here. This guy would take um, supermodels out to an island where he would um, photograph them for magazines. And then we have sample, I don't know which, I can't tell which um, cameras to look at, but um, I have sample closed can dolls here. All right, I also have a little burrow that takes the supermodels into the mountains, Brazilian burrow. Um, so they, they fit nice in these little saddlebags. So let's get started. I have a painter's palette. You want to have a, um, a sturdy palette to paint on. You want to have a good selection of brushes to use. And you also want to have fresh water and a receptacle for cleaning your brushes. All right, so I go ahead and fill that about three quarters of the way up with water, and now I'm going to jump right in. Okay, so for the closed can doll, you always want to start painting the hair first. Basically, the hair will help frame the facial features, and then I can, once I get the hair done, I can start working on the face. Once I get the face done, then I'll know where the torso. Um, will be, and then I can start working on the bathing, the bikini top and the bikini bottom. Okay, and that's when the fun starts because you, um, once you get down there, you, you um, start um, nearing completion of the doll and it becomes very realistic, which becomes exciting. Okay, so remember, once you're done with these dolls, you're going to be playing with them and um, kind of rough housing, so you want to use a good sturdy acrylic paint. It's not going to be water soluble with the um, the sweats or the, the oils in your um, palms and fingers, and it's also cleanable if they get soiled. Okay, so I'm working through the hair. Uh, you might, you want to make sure you paint around the form so you get the perspective and the um, illusion. Okay, so the hair is done. I'm going to clean my brush and then move to black paint. Uh, make sure you have a paper towel handy. Also, I'm gonna put on my gloves because I, as now the hair's done and I'm moving around the form, I don't wanna get paint all over my fingers. All right, so put the gloves on and that way I don't, as I'm painting the form, I don't transfer paint onto my hands. Okay, so here we go. So with the eyes, it's just a little dot, nose, dot, and then a little smiley face. Or a little, like a little pouty lip. Um, it's, like, it's like a common supermodel look, the, the pouty face. Okay, so now I have the hair and the face done. And now I'm using orange 
like a pumpkin for the bikini. Okay, you can see the rounded, these are vintage clothespins. You have to use this kind because they have a natural bust. And so I follow that bust line to establish the breast region. Okay, it's a little bit transparent, but you can put multiple coats. And then I want the string of the bikini to go around the form, but not into the hair. Okay, now I'm gonna work on the bottom part of the bikini. So there's not much material to a bikini, so it's actually, this whole process goes pretty fast. And then I have the string of the bikini that goes around. And then the, there's the area in between the two um, buttocks where the string sometimes disappears. It's kind of fun, you can play around with how much string you want to just disappear into the, the buttocks region. Okay, I'm going back over the front a little bit just to get a little more opacity. And we're almost done. I am going to start on the high heels. Most supermodels at a photo shoot will start off wearing the high heels and then they start playing around and like kicking a little bit and run like frolicking out into the water. And then they might switch to like Teva, aqua socks or sandals uh, for later in the photo shoot. So this is a more formal pose here with the high heels on. Really make sure you know what is the front of the supermodel, which is the back, so you don't get her shoes on backwards. That'll ruin the, the illusion. Okay, that's it, folks. So we have this little beautiful supermodel here. They usually stand up, sometimes they don't. But when they don't, if they're laying on their side, that's kind of what supermodels do too, because sometimes they get hungry and they need a candle bar. Uh, uh, not a candle bar, a candy bar. All right, want to be careful not to get paint on your table. Oh, things are falling down. All right, everybody, thanks for watching.